Hello and welcome to another How to Code Well PHP tutorial. Uh, I've still got a bit of a croaky throat. I'm feeling slightly under the weather, so uh, please bear with me. I've got a cup of tea at hand just in case. Um, today we're going to look at some methods, some functions for uh, outputting information about variables. So a variable could obviously be um, an object, it could be an array, it could be an integer, it could be a string, and so forth. So these are two functions, var dump and print r, uh, that we can use to output information about those things. Um, now I'm trying as much as possible not to use the word debug because if you're coming here to uh, learn how to debug stuff in PHP, then there's um, a, a thing, a tool called xdebug, which I highly recommend you look into over this stuff. Uh, okay, it's this is doing it like this is fine for um, w when you're starting out, but seriously, this should never be in production. Okay, uh, I'll get onto that in a little bit more detail later on. But anyway, let's let's just jump into this. So var dump and print underscore r. So what I'm going to do is just do a is equal to, and this is going to be a string, right? So just going to do he. Uh, and man, and then I'm going to do b is equal to, this is going to be an array, uh, which is going to have name is equal to he man, uh, and we're going to do uh, strength uh, is equal to, I don't know, uh, six, maybe, uh, and also we're going to do speed is equal to four. <clears throat> okay, so that's the B array. And then we're going to do a, another one, which is C. And we're going to equal that to an object. So what I'm going to do is just do, um, uh, do, do, do class hero like that. Um, so class hero, and we're going to do uh, a, 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 a public name and public uh, strength um, and a public speed, right? Um, and obviously, we're going to have a public constructor as well public uh, function uh, construct and we're going to pass in uh, these things so name strength and speed like that um, and in here whoops not in there sorry in here we're going to do um, this name is equal to name and this strength is equal to strength and obviously so i've talked about classes before if this isn't making any sense if you're wondering why i'm typing out this gobbledygook um it's an object it's a class uh and um i mean i've spoken about objects and classes and inheritance and abstraction and all of that stuff before i'll put a link in the description below just bear with me if you if you don't know what what, what all this is so we've got a class we've got a class here we've got an array and we've also got a string so i'm going to do c is equal to new uh hero and we're going to pass in he-man um, we're going to do what did i have before uh, strength is equal to six and obviously speed is equal to four. There we go. Okay, so let's try and output some of this stuff. What we're gonna do is we're gonna focus on um, var dump first, okay? So var dump, and I'm gonna put out the the a, so variable a, because that's the easiest one, because that's just a string. Um, okay, so variable a here is just a string, he man. So that's gonna dump that out. So let's save that. Uh, going back into the browser and refresh the page and let's see what we've got. Uh, okay, so forget about this stuff. This is this is just a, the path to the to the code. Uh, but this is the stuff that's really important. Okay, so it's saying on line twenty three here, right, um, which which is correct here, line twenty three. 
okay, we are uh, dumping out uh, a string, right? So it's giving us the string, the, the type. So it's giving us the data type. And we're giving, we, we've got the value, he man, and we've also got the length of six, right? So you can see how useful this is. This is actually uh, investigating the variable, what its value is, what data type it is, where it is, in the, what script it's in, and also the length of the, of the string. Very, very handy if you want to find some information out. Um, maybe you've got a bug and you need to solve that and you're, you're, you're just trying to wonder what is this variable that's causing the issue. Um, then this is a way of outputting that. Okay, so let's go back to the code and have a look at what happens when we print out something else. So that was a string. Let's do B. So let's do B like so. Save that. Go back to the code. Refresh. And now we're seeing that on line 23 again, because that's where we're dumping it out, we have an array. This array has a size of three because there are three elements in this array, right? The first element is the name, which is a string. And the string is He-Man. So this is exactly the same as we had before, but obviously it's in this, in this indexed by name. Um, then the next two are actually integers. Right, so these are these aren't strings; they're integers, and the values are six and four. Okay, let's have a look at what happens with the uh, the class. So let's go back to the code, and what we can do is print out that was uh, uh, B. Let's print out C, and what we have here is that on line twenty three again, we're printing out or we're dumping out uh, this variable, which is an object, an object of hero. Um, we have a, these these uh, class uh, uh, properties, so public uh, public uh, properties. So we have the the visibility scope, uh, name, and all of this stuff we know before. So this is the name, this is a strength and the speed, and the uh, the integers and the strings. Okay, so let's uh, let's make this a little bit more complicated. What happens if we change this to be change this visibility scope to private, right? So private, refresh, and we should see now that these change to private. Again, if we were to do this to protect it as well, uh, we would get those two. Also, what we can do is we can, we can play around with B. So B is the array. What happens if we do a nested array, right? So let's copy all of this stuff into here. And we do, uh, that's that's the first one. Let's uh, indent that a little bit better. And we're going to do another one. Um, and let's, uh, did a, there we go. Uh, so we're going to do, uh, Wonder Woman, right? And her strength, <clears throat> in my opinion, needs to be eight. And her speed, she's pretty damn fast, so let's go six. Uh, I'm going to move that up to, to, to eight, two, just so we're on equal equal footing, um, but uh, Wonder Woman's faster. <clears throat> okay, so I'm just going to change uh, variable C to variable B. Uh, save that. So that's going to print out this, uh, this nested array, this multidimensional array. Let's save that, refresh the page, and we can see now that we have an array with the size of two. So this means that there's two elements in this array, which just so happens to be um, nested arrays. So we have uh, one and we have two here. These are the indexes. Um, and so we've got size two and then we've got the each portion. Now we could even go further than this, right? So for example, let's uh, declare all of the this, this stuff. Let's kill that and Put that up here. Um, so C is equal. What happens, right? If we did this. So if we did um, uh, C, and I'm also going to be uh, uh, D as well. And I'm just going to declare that. So C and D. So these are two objects, right? So C is that one, and D is this one. So we're going to do uh, Wonder Woman and her strength. Um, we've put these up to eight, and that one to six. 
So what I'm going to do is just change that to D. And can you see that we have, um, uh, again, a size of two, because we have two arrays in here, um, but they're objects this time, OK? So this is a very, very useful way of outputting information um, about the variables and the contents and, and so forth. Excuse me. <laughs> So um, now we're going to look at print R. OK, print R is another way of, of printing out information. Um, this is very granular because it talks about uh, the, the, the data types and their lengths and so forth. Uh, print R is less so. However, it gives a little bit more um, human readable stuff, if you will. Let's, uh, let's take a look. So let's uh, comment that out and start very simply with variable a and again that was the uh, string here so let's save that refresh and we just have he-man so we don't have any information about the type of, uh, of of the variable so we don't have any information about whether it's a string or an integer and size and so forth but it comes in very handy when you're dealing with uh, arrays and objects uh, let's take a look so I'm gonna just do uh, C. So this is going to print out uh, this hero, He-Man hero. Whoops. So here we have the hero object, right? And I suppose here uh, is kind of like an array of, of elements. So this is the property name, this is the class name, and this is the vis visibility scope. And the value of all of that is the value of that property. So strength hero private, speed hero private, and so forth. This can get quite messy. This can get very, very complicated. Let's, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll just show you what I mean by that. Let's go back to here. Let's output D. So, uh, not D, sorry, forgive me. Let's print out B. Uh, so B is going to be that nested array of objects. Let's refresh. And can you see that we, we have an array and the first um, uh, element of this array is the hero object and also the second um, uh, element is also a hero object. This gets very tricky to read when the objects are quite big or the arrays are quite big. So what you can do is actually prettify this. Uh, so we can um, format this before it goes through. So let's do print um, pre. So we're going to uh, pre-format. And uh, we also should do a print and close that off as well, pre so what this is going to do is it's going to format uh, whatever is in between the, the pre-tags here. So this. So it's going to format that. Let's save that. Refresh. So, so as you can see, this has uh, changed to be um, a very nice looking array. You can read it very easily um, with the, the, the indexes here, 0 and 1. Um, it doesn't have any information about the size um, and so forth. But what is very useful uh, with this is, let's say we had, um, I'm just going to, for for argument's sake, let's just create another uh, array here. And I'm just going to call this um, E. And I'm going to do just apples and pears, right? And I'm going to print E out like that. OK, let's save, refresh this page. Um, what, we, what we've got is an actual usable array, right? So I've done this before where I've had to create a script that iterates over thousands and thousands of, of tens of thousands, you know, crazy amounts of data um, to produce a, a script that I can run against a database to import, inform, you know, uh, uh, values or um, to use it against uh, to output a CSV or something like that, right? So it's very useful for scripting. So you, you you write a script that goes through all of the bits and pieces, and then at the end of it, you can do a print R to print um, an array that you can use in another script. But, <laughs> but uh, there is um, a caveat, that, a very large caveat that I should say with using var dump and print R like this. Uh, and that is, it should never, ever, 
ever, ever, ever be exposed um, to the public. So it should never be on production. If you come across either Vardump or PrintR when you're doing a checkout of uh, some code from a, a Git repository or, or whatever, uh, and you come across these two things, Vardump and PrintR, then in my opinion, it's your duty as a developer to flag that up to the owner of the repository and or the development team leader and just say, look, this is something that we need to um, crack down on because just imagine you do a var dump, right? Let's just, just do a var dump of B again. So just imagine you're doing a var dump and this goes into production. You've got the path of the file you've got the line that you're dumping it on, and then you've got not only have you got the contents, but you've also got the, the data types and so forth. Imagine, if you will, that this, someone has, uh, for, for whatever reason, dumped out information about the credentials for accessing the database. Um, and that gets shown to, um, to the public by accident because it's been committed in by accident. Um, yeah, it's yeah, it's not good. It's not good. You, if you see var dump and print r when you do a, a git checkout of of a branch, um, then you really should be. It's a brown trouser moment. You should go right. Let's let's flag this up now. The quicker it gets flagged up, the the the, the quicker it can get resolved. And you know, it's not a witch hunt. It's not. You shouldn't see it as a as an as a personal attack. Um, the person who did it did it needs to be aware that they can't they shouldn't do it again and the whole development team should be aware that they they shouldn't do it so if you've got a very good development team uh, leader or a manager or, or, or whatever you then uh, you send them an email and just say look I've found this in the code this needs to be removed immediately before we we do another deployment um, and if he or she comes back and says who did it um, then just simply say, you know, it was X, Y, Z, but it doesn't really matter who did it. It, it needs to be solved. Think about the project. It, the, 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 you've got a responsibility for the project, right? You, to the quality of the project, which means that you need to oversee not only your code, but everyone else's code and everyone else needs to oversee your code and so forth and basically back you up. If you spot this in, in, in before it goes to production, if it gets deployed, if it goes through a deployment pipeline, then you need to put the brakes on immediately. So I've seen this before in production, which was so just a heart wrenching moment. Uh, I really felt for the developer uh, and I've also accidentally committed this in and then uncommit, you know, re uh, reverted it after after it. That was a proper brown trouser moment uh, because I didn't know when the thing was going to be deployed because it was going through uh, tests and so forth. And there was other projects that needed to come in as well. Um, but I, I, you know, I held my hand up and I just, you know, um, sorted it out there and then, um, I think development team leaders, I know this is now moving into a bit of a web chat, but I think development team leaders would be, um, a little bit more, uh, appreciative if, uh, you were responsible and held you up your hand and said, look, I'm really sorry, but I've gone and put this in. I need to revert the code. We need to just put a halt on the deployment for a minute whilst I get this out. Um, and, and then that becomes a discussion point to the rest of the team. Maybe there's other people in the team, ju junior developers who aren't aware of the risk. VAR dump is the one that is the bad baddie because it gives you the path of the code. It gives you line of the code. It gives you some very granular information about the variables and the objects and their, and their stuff. Um, and it, re it really is bad if someone is trying to get into uh, a database, right? And they can't, they can't work out how their configuration. And so they do a, a dump of the, the config um, like this, and it gives you the path of where the config file is, the file name, and all the bits and pieces that, that, that are associated to that. Um, I'm gonna talk uh, more about this kind of stuff later on in the web chats rather than in the tutorials. Um, just be aware of it, okay? Just be aware of it. Now, coming back to why why I'm showing you this stuff, um, because the last tutorial we were talking about um, web forms is because when we get back to the web forms, when we get back to that forms tutorial series um, and we submit the information, I can then print out that those variables, those posted values and show you what is coming through uh, via the form. Uh, so 
this is kind of like the foundations for getting to that point. But look, I've spoken quite a bit. My throat is getting pretty, uh, pretty knackered at the moment. Um, so I'm going to leave it there. But thanks ever so much for watching. If you're still watching already, it's a bit of a rant. I appreciate. Um, if you've got any questions, comments, or queries, please put them down in the comment section below and I'll get to them as soon as I can. Uh, do share this video out if you think others will uh, find it useful and like the video yourself if you found it useful as well. Um, do subscribe to pick up the web chats as well as the tutorials that I do each week. So every Tuesday I do a tutorial. Every Friday I do a, a web chat, basically me talking about the web, talking about programming, uh, also talking about freelance careers, career advice and, and stuff like that. But for now, thank you ever so much for watching. Happy coding, and I shall see you again uh, in the next tutorial or next web chat. Cheers. Bye.